All right, dudes, I, I know what you're thinking. When did Robert start working at a bowling alley, right? When did that happen? Listen, guys, I just pick clothes out of my closet and I throw them together and then I hit record and I call it a day, okay? I know I look like I work at a bowling alley. Doesn't help that we have this sick new set with the arcade machines. Anyways, people, we are going to be watching one of our favorite channels today. Let Me Explain Studios, Rebecca Parham, our homie, our good pal. There are some really exciting videos that I wanted to check out today. There's so many, right? I love this channel. We love this channel so much and I don't allow myself to watch these on my own. <laughs> so I've been so excited to film this video. And before we get ahead of ourselves, uh, I will mention that Rebecca recently went through a health scare. Kind of similar to me, I guess. But she made an update video about a pretty important health issue that she had recently. I already checked it out just because I wanted to make sure she was okay. But we might watch that in a little bit as well. But anyways, I'm just hoping Rebecca's all good. I also went through very serious health scare in the last month. What is it with us YouTubers and like almost dying this year? I don't know. What I do know is that I'm pretty sure Rebecca's doing a lot better. I'm doing a lot better. So let's get into it. Running away from home. Something I have uh, definitely never tried to do because if I was a kid and I tried to run away from home, I would make it five steps and realize that I have no batteries for my Game Boy. But this is one of the classic Let Me Explain Studios videos that we have not yet watched. There's also classics such as Lost My Pants in Wonderland, The Girlfriend Fairy. But this looks like a classic, so let's do it. Running away from home. Robert IDK, Let Me Explain Studios. Three, two, one. Oh, hello, my geeks and peeps, my hey. explainers and entertainers, my little oodalallies, Rebecca Parham here. I know exactly what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, Becca, why do you have that handkerchief bag on a pole, commonly referred to as a bendel that was popularized in the 1930s as a way to visually represent the impoverished migrant workers of the Great Depression? That's Are exact. You... That's literally exactly what I was thinking. I don't even need to commentate, so that's exactly what I was going to say. Are you running away? Now what would give you an idea like that? I'm just out for a picnic. However, if you care to join me, I'll tell you a story about running away. All right. I believe every single one of us as children went through phases. Some of us had a dinosaur phase, a pony phase, a space phase, any period of time where you got particularly fixated on a subject or idea. Yep. Come to think of it, I don't think we ever stopped going through phases. Now I know you're not gonna believe this, but as a kid, I was kind of weird. Breaking news, an adult artist what? was weird as a kid. This in a new research study showing that YouTubers are not as energetic in real life as they are in their uh, videos. No! More at eight. Wait, you're saying that when I, when I, when I, when I. <laughs> that you, um, you had, you, you. When I <laughs> get out of bed in the morning and I say hello to my rats, I don't say, Good morning! Are you trying to, you trying to tell me that? Now that's cap. Everybody knows that YouTubers are just as loud in every conversation as they are in their videos. All right, all right, yes. It's no surprise to anyone that I was a weird kid. And one of the really bizarre phases I went through around the third grade was this idea of running away from home. To play this game, I would tie up some things into my baby blanket, hang it from a stick over my shoulder, and pretend I was leaving home. Mostly by going into a different room. In fact, at oh. one point, I began to lock myself in the bathroom and pretend it was my tiny little house in the woods. Ha! <laughs> Running away to a house in the woods. The things children come up with. You would just hide in the bathroom? Guys, this is what happened before iPads <laughs> or whatever were a thing. And, and mobile phones. Can you imagine? She wasn't in there with a phone. She was just in there with her imagination, pretending to have run away. Oh my goodness. I cannot imagine. Guys, my ADHD is terrible now. I cannot imagine how bad it would be if I didn't go through that same phase as Rebecca, where I had to be entertained by a pitch black empty room. <laughs> Cause you don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> you don't have to do that. There exists alternatives. Now I think kids can just be fascinated by like very simple things with enough imagination. If you're a fun enough person, fun is, you know. Running away to a house in the woods, the things children come up with. Honestly, though, as a kid, I never once thought of actually doing it. I was weird, not stupid. <laughs> Apart from having no life experience to take care of myself, adults were generally in cahoots with each other. 
The grand majority of them had this belief that kids shouldn't be walking around outside by themselves or some such tyrannical nonsense. I knew I'd never get out of the neighborhood without a concerned adult uh, picking me up and returning me okay. to a very angry set of parents. So no, I had no intention of running away. But mom and dad didn't know that. I don't know what got into mm -hmm. me, but one day I wanted to play a practical joke on my mom, and I enlisted the help of my sister to do it. Around this age, Rachel and I were no longer going off to the local daycare after school. We were old enough to walk home. That's right, I eventually achieved my dreams and thereby became a latchkey kid. Rachel and I would walk home from school, use our own key to get in, and then we'd have the place to ourselves for about an hour or two before mom got home. <laughs> You know, in my mind, I was like, dude, that sounds so fun. But then I realized I'm an adult and I live by myself and I can do whatever I want whenever I want. But that's not as exciting, is it? Isn't it like more exciting to get home early? But like as a kid, as a kid, y'all got me reminiscing here. Y'all got me reminiscing. When you can always do whatever you want, it's not as exciting. You know what I mean? That hour of freedom before the parents get home sounds magical. Just enough time for Tom foolery. One unsuspecting day after school, I was bored, and thus came the aforementioned harmless prank. Mm. I was still in my running away phase, so I wrote a note for mom to find when she got home. The note basically said, Dear mom and dad, oh. I ran away from home, but I'll be fine. Don't put up signs trying to find me. I'll build my own house and get a job. No. Blah, 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 yada, yada. Uh, love you and goodbye. Oh, no. All right, come to think of it, in retrospect, this might not have been the most harmless of pranks to play on a parent. But listen, I pitched the idea to Rachel and she was all in. Oldest child is supposed to know better. Oh, just no. saying. Really shirking your responsibilities as a big sister there, Rach. I put the note oh, on Mom's pillow, no. and when we heard the garage door opening, I made myself scarce. Apparently, Rachel hid too, I guess for good measure. Well, yeah, and what, are you gonna just make her have to try and explain and play along with this note to your parents? You, you're gonna just pull this stunt and then just leave her home to be the only one to talk to your parents? Yeah, no, no wonder she hid. Apparently, Rachel hid too, I guess for good measure. And when Mom walked into the house, she went into her bedroom looking for us oh, no. and noticed the note. Oh no. Uh... Wait a second. Mom, did you read the letter? We're gone. Yes. Weren't you gonna go out and look for her? Oh well, I figured she'd come back when she got hungry. True. Oh, the care and concern I felt from my True. loving mother in that moment. <laughs> Obviously, Rachel and I were disappointed. But then mom got an idea. What if I really do throw Rebecca into the ocean? What? Now she's got the note already. If, if mom ever wanted to dispose of Rebecca, <laughs> she's literally got this note that she can use as evidence. A handwritten note. A handwritten note from the kid themselves saying, hey, I'm gonna run away. Listen, I'm not trying to give any psychopaths any ideas. I'm just spitballing here. Then mom got an idea. An awful idea. Wow. Mama got a wonderful, awful idea. <laughs> Let's get your dad. Ooh. You know, parents may not always be cool, but sometimes they're pretty cool. Our prank had been given oh, life no. once more. And when dad came home, oh, mom no. met him at the door and put on her best acting chops. Oh my gosh, I found this letter on my pillow. I think Becca ran away. What? Yes, look. What did you do? Did did you say something to her? No, he actually did that. He blamed my mom immediately. <laughs> no, I did not. Rachel, have you seen your sister? No, she walked home ahead oh, of me. I haven't man. seen her. And the Academy Award goes to these two because dad bought it hook, line, and sinker. Poor dad. Dad naturally was very upset and flustered. I mean, the man thinks that his daughter is wandering the streets alone and cold and hungry and probably being eaten by coyotes or squirrels or something, I don't know. So he declares, We must go forth and return the second born to her rightful place. In these, the hallowed halls of Castle Perham. Okay, I wasn't in the room at the time, but I'm pretty sure that's what he said. <laughs> in his mind. Either way, he told my mom and sister to get ready for the search. But before the harrowing journey could commence, 
he had to make a pit stop at the bathroom. Now up until this point, Mom and Rachel had done their parts perfectly, but leave it to me to mess up the oh, joke. Oh no. The joke that was my idea. For you see, there was a wealth of hiding places in that house. Any number of spots would have sufficed, but I chose possibly the worst place apart from just standing out in the Not open with a lampshade on my head. I picked my mom and dad's shower that had a frosted but still very <laughs> transparent glass door. Why not hide in your own room? Why would you hide in his bathroom? Why not the one that he's not gonna go into? Kid logic, I, 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 I'm telling you people, it just doesn't exist sometimes. So when dad walked into the bathroom... Uh, I see you in the back. <laughs> Listen, all nice. I'm saying is that I already paid for the order. It's not my problem how you get 426 pumpkins out here. <laughs> I'll call you back. <clears throat> Dad found me in the shower and was rightfully upset. Probably very relieved, but very upset. Mom and Rachel soon came in laughing hysterically, oh, further no. rubbing salt in Dad's wound. Oh, no. You all are a bunch of jerks. And as if this whole video couldn't get any <gasps> juicier, look what my mother found. This is the actual note from this story. She kept it all of those years. Oh my gosh. Is she about to read this or do I read this? Okay, I think she's gonna, is she gonna read this? I don't know. What I do know is I'm reading this. Dear mom and dad, I ran away from home to find my own life. P.S. I love you, I love you, and I will miss you. What on earth? Earth! What an evil genius! That's like convincing! She has like good handwriting here. And she's like showing that she's really gonna make I can't believe you would do that! I mean hilarious, but oh my gosh! You could carbon date this thing and get 25 years of gunk off of it. And if you'll make note, fellow scholars, you shall see that the handwriting has scarcely changed. Also, I just love the fact that at the bottom here, I wrote, I love you four times just to make sure that my parents knew this was not personal. <laughs> Those of you feeling sorry for my dad, don't worry. They say there's only five love languages, but my family has a sixth one, messing with each other. Dad got his revenge hundreds of times over the years. Good, good. And trust me when I say, I loved every moment of it. Aw. And who would want to run away from that? Thanks for joining me for a picnic, Explainers. And thank you so much for tuning in, but now... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Dad's getting his real revenge now. Or is it the pumpkins? Oh, no. I just booty cheeks. Man. This is spooky, what's going on? I'm not gonna get jump scared, am I? If I get jump scared, it's gonna work. It's gonna work if they if they jump scared. Oh, don't oh, scare no, me no, like no, that, Rebecca! No. That one was awesome. That was a great story. I would say, let me explain Studios Classic. Definitely one of my new favorites from Rebecca. I Again, I would never run away from home or do a prank like that. I think maybe like, there are a couple times when you're a kid that, that you're like mad at your parents or whatever and you start being mean and stuff and it happens and it's not fun, it's not nice, I don't recommend it. But yeah, no, the running away from home, like that just makes me, the thought of that just hurts my heart, you know? Like, I would never want to do that that prank. And now people, on to another classic. Lost my pants in Wonderland? Not really a combination of words you want to go together. It sounds horrific enough to lose your pants. Doing so in Wonderland sounds like a nightmare. And by the way, guys, as usual, make sure you are subscribed to Rebecca's channel. These animation videos take a lot of work and she deserves all the credit in the world. Her link will be at the end of the video and in the description. Make sure you are subscribed. And if you're watching this video and for some reason you are not subscribed to this channel, my channel, uh, it would be really cool if you subscribed here as well. It's free and you can stop whenever you want. But don't stop. There's no stopping. We ain't stopping. Life is Roblox. In life you have Roblox. And uh, if you want to like the video, that would be cool. I'd appreciate it as well. If we get to 15,000 likes, I'll do another Let Me Explain Studios video. How about that? Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Robert IDK, Let Me Explain Studios. Three, two, one. So as some of you have come to understand, I am a theater brat. And in my high school days, I was heavily involved in my school's theater program. 
Now, I could tell you a lot of stories about high school theater, but we're just going to stick with this one for right now. Ooh, so in our department, we put on two shows every year. And for my sophomore year, our teacher chose for our spring play, Alice in Wonderland. Oh. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the story. I audition, of course, and I get the part of Tweedledum and the Old Griffin. What? I wanted Queen of Hearts, but my teacher was a mentally unstable, vindictive woman who didn't really like me, so what can you do? Oh no, really? I thought we had seen all of the worst of this horrendous woman. Just the entire high school career, you're getting gypped out of the good parts. Listen, I know I'm probably biased. I don't know Rebecca's classmates. Maybe they were wonderful, but come on. You know Rebecca would have nailed that part better than the person they picked. So why is Alice in Wonderland, why does it always look so creepy, dude? Can we not have like, just like, not creepy looking Alice in Wonderland media for once? Also, there were no two people in our department that looked anything alike, so we had to go for the opposite effect with the Tweedles. A tall, thin boy and a short, round girl. So as per usual for high school short theater, we had no budget. So we had to design and make our own costumes. Now, the Tweedle concept that we came up with was kind of cute. We had propeller hats, black shirts, but then we made these big, wide hula hoop pants that held up over our shoulders with ribbon suspenders. Cool. The other costume I wore was for the Griffin, which was basically just a peach-colored sweatsuit covered sparsely with feathers to look like a balding old Griffin. Like I said, no budget. Now, chronologically in the play, the Tweedle scene comes first, and in that scene, we would recite The Walrus and the Carpenter. Of course. The way we played it was, he and I were constantly fighting for the spotlight, pushing each other out of the way, a lot of choreographed physical humor type stuff. Then immediately after that, we would have a battle oh. with feather dusters and bucket helmets. Okay, 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 okay. I see where the title is about to come into play. They about to lose their pants. They're about to get into a battle with these very nefarious pants. And those pants are going down. Now, did this happen during a rehearsal? Or did it happen during the real thing? Two very different levels of implication. Then immediately after that, we would have a battle with feather dusters and bucket helmets. And once all of that was done, we would rush off stage and go get changed for the mock turtle and griffin scene. Of course. Pretty straightforward stuff. So after weeks of rehearsals, we finally opened to the public. Oh, uh, it's first the three real thing. They go off without a hitch. They're great, they're wonderful, nothing bad happens. But the fourth night, oh. things didn't really go according to plan for me. The Tweedle scene comes up and we start our whole walrus and carpenter spiel. Now, one of the things that we had choreographed to happen was Tweedledee would stand next to me and he would open up his arms really wide and really fast oh, and no. hit me in the stomach. Those straps are going. But on this fourth night, he hit me so hard that both of my flimsy ribbon suspenders oh, snapped. No. Peace. <sighs> Goodbye, pants. No! Of course my pants immediately fall. I pick them up as fast as I possibly could, but the audience had already seen and they were all roaring with laughter. I bet, I bet, hey, if you play this off right, this could look intentional. This could look intentional. I mean, depending on what was under the pants, to be completely honest. I guess, I guess that's probably one, one of the things. Because if you wore like wacky polka dot, giant polka dot boxers under, then it's like, oh, funny, funny gag. You guys did a great visual gag. But if it's some, yeah, some stuff that you, yeah, people sh definitely shouldn't see, then, uh, yeah. But you could play it off. I don't know, what's worse? I feel like it's, I feel like the best thing you can possibly do is play it off as if, like, yeah, we just nailed an incredible joke. Now, don't jump to conclusions. Nobody actually saw my underwear because I was wearing the griffin pants underneath. Oh. But oh, also boom. keep in mind that the griffin pants were peach colored. True. So in that fleeting moment of True. my pants being down, the audience thought they saw nothing but skin. Oh, Ooh, and I'll no. tell you how I know that in a minute. I look to Tweedledee for help. He's giving me this blank stare. <laughs> Alice is dumbfounded. I'm panicking inside my head. I was terrible at improv back then. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do to cover for this. Yikes. So I just carried on with the poem, holding up my pants for dear life. Yeah. I think at one point Alice tried to covertly fix it on stage with some safety pins, but <laughs> the pants were beyond repair. And my hands were full, because here's a little bit of life wisdom for you. You need two hands to hold up a pair of hula hoop pants. True. So I basically continued the rest of the scene, including that feather duster battle, without the use of my hands. Which apparently proved to be very hilarious because the audience was dying. Good! Anyways, I make it off stage in one piece, we finish the show, nothing else happens. 
and then afterwards it was always our tradition to go out into the lobby in costume and talk to the audience as they were leaving. So I'm standing in the lobby in my Griffin costume talking to people, which was nice because it kind of felt like I was in disguise. Like, <laughs> nobody will know I was Tweedledum. Nobody will know the disgrace that I have brought upon my family. Nah, 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 fam. They're gonna, they're gonna see those Griffin pants. Or wait, yeah, she did say that this will come up. So maybe, yeah, maybe she, maybe people didn't see the Griffin pants in time and this disguise will actually work. Either way, you gotta just laugh it off, you know? That's really the only option here. But I guess because I was in disguise, this old man didn't mind saying in front of me, My favorite part was when we got to see the girl's hiney. Uh... Yeah. Uh... Creepy. What? I did. That could not have been creepier. There are so many ways he could have worded that to make it slight, like no matter what that's super Bruh. creepy. But like, I thought it was so funny when uh, the girl's pants fell down, poor girl, whatever. But my, I'm not even gonna repeat it. Tiny. I don't need this footage. I don't need this footage of me saying this sentence that he said on the internet. Let's just repeat what he said. My favorite part was when we got to see the girls. Tiny. Bad touch. Bad touch! Stranger danger! That is the worst possible way to word that. Again, it shouldn't be your favorite part either. If you're saying that, that's weird. The whole thing's weird. Dude, just, just stop talking. Just stop talking. Creepy. Very creepy. Moral of the story! Don't use ribbons to hold up your pants. Boom. What kind of moral is that? Don't use ribbons to hold up your pants. Use the two hands and the stuff and the keep to keep your pants up, you know? Cause if you ain't got your pants up, if you got your pants on the ground, we gonna have a problem. In fact, we got a little song to remind y'all. Pants on the ground, pants on the ground, looking like a fool with your pants on the ground, with the gold in your mouth, hat turned sideways, pants hit the ground. What? Talking with your pants on the ground, get it up! Yeah. Hey, get your pants off the ground! Pants on the ground, pants on the ground, pants on the ground, pants on the ground. Okay, sorry. All right, that was a great vid. On to the next one. The Girlfriend Fairy. I have no idea what this could be about, but I'm actually very interested. So I don't know how to really tee this one up. I say we just watch it. I'm very excited. I no idea what this could be, but let's go, people. You ready? The Girlfriend Fairy. Three, two, one. My love life. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about my love life here for a moment. Okay. And that's about the amount of time that it takes to talk about it, a moment. Because my love life is non-existent. I could go off about why that is, but in the interest of not completely scaring off any future love interests, <laughs> we won't be riding trip through Rebecca's emotional baggage today. Instead, I'm gonna talk about this weird phenomenon that has happened to me, I wanna say, at least five times recently. And by the time something happens for the fifth time, it becomes a pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about right. Oh, and before I go any further, I realized that this old video has caused a little bit of confusion. Okay. Trust me, honey, I don't see any men, period, let alone someone else's husband. Here is my grand non-reveal of the sex that I'm attracted to. Sorry, ladies, but I'm straight. Though I think you're all beautiful. While I haven't been on many dates or anything, I still periodically get guys who flirt with me. Sometimes they're guys I've known in person, and sometimes they're guys I've only ever known online. It's been a lot of the latter lately. That's kind of how it goes when you're a person who spends eight plus hours a day either animating a video or editing videos. That's about how life works. As a YouTuber, like since I became a YouTuber, some people, y'all may think, oh, Robert, you must have, you've gotten cooler. You've gotten more appealing, uh, probably. You know, you, you became uh, successful and better at talking to people and whatnot. Yeah, except I spend all my time inside working on my videos. So, so yeah, typically you're more likely to get attention online, honestly. So it's like a challenge because it's like, well, if I'm trying to like actually meet people, I'd, I'd want to actually meet people, real life people in the real world. So as a YouTuber, I definitely learned that I had to like really take that upon myself. It's hard, guys, being a normal human when you're also a YouTuber. Very difficult. Don't recommend. But here is the gist of what happens. A guy I know well enough will flirt with me for a little while, usually in my DMs on social media sites like Facebook and Twitter. Nothing spicy, just some cute banter and compliments and the general just paying attention to me kind of thing. Enough that you know it's flirting. Okay. But after a while of this, 
they'll just suddenly disappear or Aww. stop responding to the conversation. And then not three weeks later, they will have suddenly acquired no! a girlfriend. No! What? I am not joking. I'm not naming any names, of course, but this actually happens. And it sucks because a couple of them were guys I was kind of interested in. Except one. Oh boy, uh, I was uh, in the middle of getting it. a Oh boy, I was in the middle of getting a pedicure one day and he tweeted me that he had just found a girlfriend and I was like, "What?" <laughs> that was the only time this curse worked in my favor. But seriously though, you can imagine that this all began to hurt my feelings after a while. One guy after another, showing interest, disappearing, and then immediately getting a girlfriend. It made me start asking things like, what's wrong with me? Is it, is it something I'm doing? And one day I just finally made up my mind that, wow, I'm the practice girl. <gasps> I've become the crash no. test dummy you practice your moves on, no. build up your confidence, and then go after the big fish. The day I figured this out, it was both amusing and disheartening, and I thought, well, I'll make a joke out of it. That's a very sad way of looking at things. Uh, I, re I hope Rebecca doesn't still feel this way. Listen, I think a lot of us go through a phase. So this was this video is what, six years old, I think? Yeah, this, this video is six years ago. So hopefully by now, Rebecca is like much more confident in this regard. We all go through these phases. I've definitely gone through these phases where I was like, yo, every person I get into ends up moving on from me. I must be the problem. I must be the issue. And then, I don't know, guys, as time goes on, you mature, you become more yourself. Some people mature at different rates, and some people find themselves at different rates. But that kind of thing, where I started, you know, sort of feeling like a victim, feeling like it was never gonna work out, that stopped happening for me. And I think that comes from experience, self-love, and realizing what you actually want in life. And honestly, this, if, if I were to actually go down this path of, of, of speaking about this, I could make like a 30-minute video on this, so I'm not gonna do that, but I do just hope that, uh, yeah, Rebecca's more confident now, and I hope that nobody watching feels like they're cursed or something. You just haven't been t talking to the right people, or you aren't at a point yet where you're ready for it, and it's just not time yet. But it's all, it's gonna happen, it's all gonna be good. So the summer of 2016, I tweeted, I've noticed a pattern. Guys will flirt with me for a brief period of time in my DMs, and then immediately find a girlfriend. Cringe. I'm the practice girl. Aww. Oh, woe is me. I'm so pitiful. <laughs> Honestly, I posted that tweet because I thought, well, this is weird enough to be entertaining in a schadenfreude type way. You know, getting pleasure from the fact that you can say, well, at least I'm not her. But yeah, a little part of me did post that tweet just to, uh, well, complain. Just a smidge. Let me complain, studio. I posted the tweet, and immediately so many of you said such nice things to lift my spirits, and I really appreciated it. But then, one of you, one of you turned the entire mood of that tweet on me. <laughs> At J underscore Biggity Bar said this. So what you're saying is, if I just continue keep saying nice things to you, I might find a girlfriend. <laughs> and then suddenly, all was made clear. I'm not the practice girl. I'm the girlfriend fairy. There you go. Good one job. One for you and one for you. Yes. And one for you. Yes. You get a girlfriend and you Woo! get a girlfriend. <laughs> I've lost my mind, in case you haven't noticed. No, but in all seriousness, that one humorous statement really made me feel better, and even inspired me artistically, as you can see. I don't know why that weird pattern with me and guys keeps happening, but this whole thing has really been a reminder that if you look at your problems from a funny angle, they don't look so much like problems oh. anymore. And when you come to that place where you can just laugh at the things that get you down, they become easier to handle. It takes away a little bit of the power your problems have over you. Yeah. All right, explainers and entertainers, that's all I got. But hey, if you continue to like, comment, and subscribe, mayhaps you'll get a girlfriend too. Oh, 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 oh boop the button, boop the button. I'm just playing, guys, I'm good. <laughs>
I just wanted to boop like on that video, you know. Mayhaps you'll get a girlfriend too. Or a boyfriend. I don't know if my fairy magic covers those. That was another awesome one. I think we should check out one more quick one before we call it a day. This has been so, so, so much fun. I'm having too much fun to stop right now. I, I say we gotta do one more, right? Working late. Scary. <gasps> Is this actually scary? Are we actually about to watch something spooky? It's only three minutes long, so don't worry. If it is spooky, we only have to get spooked for a moment. But are we about to get spooked? I don't know. But I'm feeling crazy, and I say we close it off with this wackiness. I did a poll the other day asking you guys if I should look at some scary animations, and 90% of you said yes. So, we are probably going to do that soon, okay? The return of I Am A Wimp? Maybe. 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 Let's not get crazy here. Maybe. But for now, let's look at some working late, people. Three, two, one. All right. Read the warning, homies. Okay. I'm working late right now, you guys. It Ten fifty-six. Bruh. Or ten seventeen. I'm stupid. What's going on? You okay, Rebecca? Is she working in the back rooms? That'd be bad. Oh, 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 I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like what I'm... Okay. Well, how's the dude gonna look this time? Oh, no, no, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. This is straight up a spooky short. Ooh, not the dude. Ooh. This is how I com This is how I commentate on spooky stuff, you guys. Oh no. Oh no. You need to chill. Is it the dude? Where's the dude? Dude's coming. Back. Hey! <laughs> what was that? Really, Rebecca? Well, I'll tell you what that was. That was, uh, in one minute and 40 seconds, you making my palms sweat. Gosh, I am a wimp. Ah, ah, he said it, he said it. I really am. I, I truly am. I wasn't kidding. Guys, when I named the series, I am a wimp, it's because, uh, guess what? I'm a wimp, people. Okay, well that was incredibly short. You know what, since that was so short and we've got the extra time, let's watch Rebecca's most recent video, the update about her health. We can get up to date and uh, we can end this video with some support for her. How does that sound? I had surgery, my body tried to drown me. Explainers, entertainers, my squishy little oodalallies. It's been a bit, hasn't it? And for that, I am the sorriest. But I'm flying high on some post-surgery painkillers right now and I thought I'd give you an update. Some of you saw this picture on my community post or on Instagram and had a small heart attack. Oh God, she's dying. She's already dead. She posted this from the afterlife. No, that's how you take your hospital photos, homie. You gotta say what up to the game. You have like a, you have like a, I'm not really that okay facial expression. And then you say what up with the hand. <laughs> that was me. That was me. We were, yeah, we were probably in the hospital at a very similar time. Nah, you can't get rid of me that easily but this surgery was definitely overdue. See, what happened was sometime during the last few years, I did something that moved my innards around. Oh. Still don't know what I did, but knowing me, it was probably something stupid, like I rolled out of bed wrong. But unbeknownst to me, I had given myself a hiatal hernia. Oh. What's a hiatal hernia, you may be asking? Well, we all have a diaphragm. <clears throat> diaphragm. A that diaphragm. That's a piece of skin below your lungs that helps with breathing. And it helps you talk like this. If you haven't figured out how to use Use your diaphragm, I highly recommend it. Now diaphragms have a hole in them where the esophagus goes through. That's the food tube. And a hiatal hernia is when the top part of your stomach gets pushed through that hole Ooh, in the diaphragm. Yeah. yeah, not good. 
and it causes a boatload of medical problems. Yeah. For me, it started with chronic heartburn a couple years ago, and I became dependent upon acid reducers, which is not good. You're not supposed to take those every day, let alone every day for years. Yeah. But over the last few months, things escalated rather quickly. Food wasn't pushing through to my stomach very well, and I couldn't get a full night's sleep because every night stomach acid was coming up my esophagus and into my lungs. My body was literally trying to drown me. So my doctor stuck a camera down my throat and said, hmm, this don't look right. You should have come to me sooner, you dingus. An endoscopy. I had one of those. I got the camera through the mouth and I got the camera through the rear. Yeah, so fun, guys. Guys, so fun. Really can't recommend it enough. Having three feet worth of camera tubes just put through your body. Actually, guys, try to avoid having that happen at all costs uh, or doing anything that would make you have to get one. If you do have to get one, an endoscopy or colonoscopy, please do, because they could save your life. But uh, yeah, it's not the best. It's not the most fun thing ever. So my doctor stuck a camera down my throat and said, hmm, this don't look right. You should have come to me sooner, you dingus. So it was becoming incredible. Increasingly obvious. I could deny it no longer. I needed surgery. Now I have six new holes in my abdomen and incredible pain in my neck, shoulders, and back. I didn't know this, but during laparoscopic abdominal surgery, they gotta fill your abdomen full of gas so the surgeon can see what they're doing. And that gas puts a lot of pressure mm, on your abdomen, yep. causing incredible pain to travel up to your shoulders and neck. So when I woke up from surgery, I was instantly oh, hit yeah. with like a nine on the pain scale. Oh, I was yeah. trying to be a big brave boy, but it hurt so bad I actually started crying. <laughs> Mommy, I got a boo-boo. And I've been struggling with that pain ever since I got home. The painkillers barely touch it, and I was told I'd have to just let it ride out. Fun. So yeah, that has been my last couple of days. Nothing but soft foods for a while, and I got a plie like a ballerina to sit down or pick up stuff. I'm actually standing at my standing desk to do all this drawing right now because I'm not allowed to hunker over. Learn from my failure, oodalallies. Don't ignore these medical problems or put them off till later. I could have saved myself years worth of pain if I had just been more proactive. Her symptoms sound actually so much like mine. Mine is all in here as well. Uh, I have extreme pressure and pain in my abdomen for different reasons. Mine isn't because of air pushing, it's because my intestines have like swelled up to like twice their regular size. Pretty horrible, not gonna lie. And yeah, I can also say that like, yeah, it's like the worst pain of my life. People talk about like, oh, what rate your pain on a scale of one to 10. And you never wanna like undersell it. You never like wanna undersell it. But I felt like I was at like an eight, nine or 10. Like when it's at its worst, it is like a 10. I am legit feeling a strong nine to a 10 on this thing. Like it's a, it's a type of pain that you have to like literally yell out. Thankfully, this last flare up I had didn't have those spikes to the same degree, but the chronic pain was, was there just as bad. But when it's really, really bad and you have like little like spikes, it's a 10, it's a, it's a 10 on the pain scale. Anyways, Rebecca, I feel you. I really hope you're recovering. We're all just doing our best out here. We gotta stay healthy. That's the most important thing in the world. And if you're watching watching this, hey, please never take your health for granted. You being put on this earth and being alive, you are incredibly lucky and don't waste that by making unhealthy choices. Please take care of your body. Do your best to eat good foods, get some exercise, drink tons of water, and you can avoid having to take an unwanted trip to the hospital. You never realize how valuable your health is until you don't have it anymore. So please try to be proactive and take care of yourself now while you can. All right, people, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to Rebecca. If you are not subscribed to her channel and you are still watching, what is wrong with you? You should do that. Make sure you're subscribed. Here's the full playlist of Let Me Explain Studios videos that we have done. Check it out. If you are missing any of these, you've got some watching to do, homie. Or here's one video in particular that YouTube thinks you will like. Are they right? You let me know. People, thank you for watching my stuff. I appreciate you. Have a great day. Peace.